Oh my, my mind goes back. Forgive a personal story. I was 19. I tried to talk about God at high table with some very senior professors, and one was a Nobel Prize winner. And he said, Lennox, I want you in my room afterwards. So I went to his room. He had three other professors there, one student, me. He sat me down. He said, do you want a career in science? I said, yes, sir, I do. Well, he said, give up these childish notions of God. They'll cripple you. You'll look far worse than everybody else. You'll never make it. So give them up. That was pressure. Image. What did he think of me? So I said, sir, what have you got to offer me that's better than what I've got? And he came out with some ancient philosophy that I had heard of, but most haven't. It's called Bergsonianism. And don't worry if you've never heard of it. And when he'd finished, I said, sir, if you don't mind, I'll stick with what I've got. But I never forgot it. We're going to stand for God in the public space, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have to sort out the matter of our image because we all get scared. Identity and image are the two biggest questions. So many young people, my heart goes out to them. They live in a different world from me where all the stabilities that I knew as a child have disappeared and they want an identity. Of course they do. And they don't want to look bad. And the pressure comes, well, just keep quiet about your God then. And so God never gets into the public space. But the result of this was that uh, the young men turned out better than everybody else. And you say, isn't that marvelous? If I follow God in the university, I'm going to get the very best degree. Not necessarily, you're not. That's what happened to them. It's not guaranteed it'll happen to you. But I hope you begin to see, there's a whole book full of this, by the way. We're only starting, we're scratching. But these basic principles that relate to public witness to God, they are the reason Daniel never shut up and was able to carry high office, enormously high office, until the very end of his days as an old man, remained true to his faith in God. And here we read it 26 centuries later. Do you realize what's in this book of Daniel? It's chapter 4 was not written by Daniel. It was written by the emperor. It's his testimony of how he came to know God through Daniel's witness. Wouldn't you like to have a document written by world leaders telling how they came to faith, wouldn't you? Well, here's one. That's probably why it's written in Aramaic, because everybody could read Aramaic. That that young man in university made such an impression that when the time was ripe, he stood in that vast throne room of Babylon where Nebuchadnezzar was terrified by a dream he'd had. And as perhaps a 20-year-old. And the emperor looks at this young man and he says, Can you, you interpret dreams, can you? And Daniel says, There isn't a man on earth that can tell the king his dreams. And then these next words, they almost give me goose pimples. But there is a God in heaven, your majesty. Wow, it's magnificent. Utterly magnificent. And you know, there's something in me, and I'll be honest with you, I covet that courage. There is a God in heaven. And I trust your moment will come. When, whether you're terrified or not, you're able to say, there is a God in heaven.